Good evening, Vinod. Good. Good evening, Vinita. Good evening. Hi. Hi, hello. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to a very wonderful session of medical and surgical nursing on my channel, Healthcare Hub, today at 6 p.m. So this is Reshma, Senior Nursing Officer at ESIC Hyderabad. So today we will be discussing the topics like uh, Burns topic, types of hepatitis, cerebrovascular accident, angina. So these are the topics we will be discussing. So in burst topic, we will be discussing more about uh, this uh, Burns formula. So how we are going to calculate the Burns formula. So the depth of the Burns and how to know the surface area of the extent of the Burns we will be watching now. So is my audio, audio audible and my video visible to everyone? So please let me know in the comment section. Those who are, are online, just let me know. Everything is okay. Shall we start the session today? Okay. <clears throat> Voice clear, we know. Thank you, we know. We know is always the first one to attend my classes. Okay, audio clear. Okay, thanks for the confirmation, Vinita. So let me tell you a few things regarding this uh, examination. Um, regarding traveling, see many of the students are getting examination centers either at their hometown or far away from their hometown. So you, those who people are traveling from one place to another, please make arrangements so that you are sleep is not disturbed when you are attending the exam. If you are traveling for the whole night and attending exam on the next day and if you are sleep drip dried, then definitely you will be sleeping on the examination hall. So, um, go for a good hotel stay and have a good diet and don't sleep in the examination hall. And at least 2-3 to three hours before exams, please don't touch the books. Please stay calm, peaceful so that it, it will be useful for you for uh, preparing while exams or writing exam and don't be stressed up. In most near the examination centers, I find really students are reading at a time, group members will be reading all the question and answers and they will be confused, they will be telling the friends also be confused. So, avoid such scenarios in front of the examination hall, go peacefully and carry all the necessary documents, whatever the Aadhaar card, Xerox they are asking or thumb impression, everything they will be giving a set of instructions, follow those instructions clearly and uh, perform well in the exams. And uh, coming to the email ID, so many of the people are uh, applying for central government jobs and you people are like uh, using multiple mail IDs when you are applying for a job. So, 
uh, have a one correct email id so that whatever communication they want to give it to you they will be sending through the mail id so have a proper one email id and check your and have the habit of checking your mail daily check your mail daily so that uh, whatever communication process is happening between the examination center or exam conduction so that you will come to know through that proper mail id and most of the time after filling the application process what the students will be doing like uh, the documents so whatever the documents they are getting now through the process of application form save those documents properly in a zip file have a proper zip file and segregate all your documents and keep it safely when you are selected in the examination you people have to produce the certificates during the document verification so have all your documents uh, securely and have the certificates whatever certificates is with you scan all the copies your 10th your intermediate your degree your convocation certificate your marks list everything your thumb impression your signature have all the say or soft copies of all the documents safely in your mail id so that whenever you are applying for any government jobs or whenever whenever you want you want to produce these important documents keep it safely in your mail id clear and also have this common knowledge regarding the system updation how you are going to operate a system how you are going to open see nowadays most of in our in the hospital where i am working in esic hospital all the documents or all the procedures if you want to settle the blood samples collect the blood samples or if you want to see the document reports everything everything is online so have try to acquire minimum knowledge of this uh, system related hope you will do all these things and hope my explanation is uh, enough for you regarding this your exam preparation your traveling your mail id right we will start the session rebecca good evening okay so today's session in message we will be discussing very 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 important topic that is um, burns topic today so here the question is an adult sustained a burn injury so the adult has a burn injury where involving the bilateral lower limb so here they are talking about bilateral lower limbs and the genitalia so the genitalia is also included then one palm surface space burn area on the chest so on the chest they have around one palm surface area of burn so what is the percentage of total burn surface area so in the in the question they have clear cut mentioned about two lower limbs two lower limbs means both the legs so both the legs the patient has burns uh, burns area and the perineal uh, genital area also the patient had burns and on the chest one palm surface is the patient has got burns so here the question is so what is the percentage what is the percentage of total burn area here whether it is 36 37 38 or 39 so before we understand this topic burns we should know what are the types of burns what are the cause of cause of burns the definition of burns so burns is nothing but injury to the tissue caused by contact or exposure to heat so contact or exposure to heat electricity or by chemicals or by radiation this is called burns so this is called as burns so coming to the burns so everybody have at least one or twice or in their lifetime till now who are uh, whoever has gone near cooking or in the working area during your at least your intermediate period during in the chemical lab chemistry lab you might have seen through this uh, chemical burns and all so everybody might have known what is burn and what is heat and how it happens right so thermal burns so it has been divided into thermal burns chemical burns electrical burns and radiation burns so through four methods we can have this burns so thermal burns how this thermal burns occurs this thermal burns mainly occurs due to flame hot liquid if any boiling liquid like uh, when anything boiling on the stove that hot water falls on your hand at that time or any hot object hot object when you touch any hot object then immediately what will have that is called as thermal burns the next one is chemical burns so chemical burns is when there is a burn by strong acid strong acid or alkaline or any other chemical compounds so during my intermediate period na this uh, my one of my classmates this uh, sulfur uh, h2so4 the sulfuric acid when she was doing that chemistry lab practicals the just 
who through three drops of that uh, sulfuric acid histoscope for fell on her hand and she really had this chemical burns at that time we going to know what is that chemical burns and if you look at this symbol in exam they may also ask so what is this symbol so this is triangle itself so triangle shape itself says that is caution caution means you should be alert so the chemical materials is there for that this symbol is used so the chemical material may fall on your hand and you may get chemical burns so the burns which is caused due to chemicals is called as chemical burns and those who are watching my channel please like the channel and share in your group so that whoever uh, wants to listen to this uh, medical surgical nursing topics now they can come live uh, share in your groups immediately so that everybody can come and listen to this classes live clear then the next one is electricity burns and please do like the channel do like the channel and those who are watching the channel do subscribe my channel and thanks for all the subscribers from all over the india uh, from india and we have also audience from qatar thank you so much and we have audience from united states also thank you so so much from my bottom of my heart for those who are watching my channel and encouraging my channel throughout the india it's not like north india south india or like that so from all parts of india people are watching and encouraging this and like like, uh, like the channel and subscribe the channel and sharing in the most important groups and making it a very good success thank you so much from bottom of my heart then coming to the electrical burns so when you come to the electrical burns the burn which is produced by the electrical energy so when any person comes in contact this electricity they will get this electrical burns so the main uh, problem with this electrical burns is there we have inner burns to the inner organs inner organs or to the internal organs so in electrical burns we can mostly find this internal organ burn injury in the electrical burns then coming to the radiation burn so radiation burn when it happens so the radiation burn exposure to uh, any radioactive substance so any radioactive source when the person is getting exposed so at that time and burn by any radiotherapy or sun burn or heat stroke so all this even the sun burn comes under this radiation burn got it if an exam in your exam if they are asking so radiation burn also comes under this sun burn also comes under this radiation burn understood so i am used i am using specific images so that it will stay in your long term memory when you are preparing for your exams uh please have a pen and paper and have a colorful uh, glitter pens or colorful sketch pens whichever pen stick pen whatever you have no have the no notes in a very colorful manner like in a flow chart or diagram so that what whenever next time whenever reading it should not feel clumsy and whatever notes you people are preparing na uh, try to have a good thick book like a diary form not the delicate paper which uh, gets really wet or torn off when you are daily studying so diary type books will be there na in that diary type books use a good pen good color pe color pen and draw it nicely write it nicely write it in a flow chart form so that it will be easy for you to understand next uh, whenever you are study clear then so extent of how we how uh, how we will come to know regarding the body surface area injured so here body surface area so the body surface area injury burn injury can be calculated by three methods one is palmer method and the other is rule of 9 and the third is lund and browder method as i am teaching this class try to pronounce these words when you are pronouncing these words it you will remember these words for a longer period of time say say along with me palmer method rule of 9 lund and browder method so coming to the palmer method so here palmer method means the patient whoever got this burns so the patient whoever has got burns uh, so when the patient body when we want to measure any scattered type of burns estimate the burn surface you say you have surface area using the palm method so using the patient's palm to know the extent of scattered burns scattered burns means when the, on the patient body 
the patient has burns all over the body like in a scattered manner there means like a like bits bits so in that type we can use this palmer method is useful in those type of burns means in scattered burns we will be using the patient palm excluding we will not including the fingers here only the palm method we will use and one palm is equal to one percentage clear any doubts in this so one percentage one palm is equal to one percentage skin it is useful in scattered burns scattered burns means all over the body wherever the burns has happened only on the means a little bit scattered way there we can use this palmer method then rule of nine so the rule of nine has been very a famous method of estimating the total burn surface area all these methods whatever i am telling it is only to estimate the surface area not the depth depth method is where we are going to see whether it is first degree second degree third degree burn that is depth here we are going to use the surface area how much the burns is happened for that we are going to follow this rule of nine so if you look at the rule of nine here multiples of nine nine as well as multiples so multiples of 9 will be following here so for head and neck around for head and as well as neck around 9% and each arm if you look at the arms here each arm 9% understood and if you look at the right leg or left leg each leg carries around 18% of score here and for genitalia and for genitalia it's only 1% so in exams they may ask questions like so what is the percentage of burns for genitalia or private parts like that so just you can start right off like one percentage clear and for the chest anterior portion of the chest anterior means your front portion of your chest it is around 18 percent and complete back complete back that is around 18 percentage so understood the rule of nine here so the rule of nine is we are all going to calculate according to the uh, multiples of 9 here. So, here the body is divided into how many areas? It, it is divided into 11 areas. So, head and neck both together we will calculate here. Both are not separate. Head and neck both with, uh, both commonly we will give a 9 score. And right hand separately, left hand separately will give 9 percentage. And for anterior trunk, posterior trunk 18 percentage. And both legs. So, both leg, each leg carries around 18 percentage and in genitalia it is around 1 percentage so so many mcqs can come from this topic so listen thoroughly okay ma'am this class recorded available now ma'am no ma'am this is live ma tamil chalvan this class is live this is not a recorded one once the class gets over uh, definitely you can uh, listen in a you can uh, listen in a super speed way 1.25x, 1.5x or 2x speed you can also listen. Clear? Okay. Whatever the classes I am taking here, the same notes I will post in my telegram link. Okay. Soon it will get posted in the telegram link. So, there you can watch the complete notes of the session whatever I am taking here. Clear. The next one is uh, London Browder method. So, London Browder, Browder method, it is mostly we use this for children, for calculating the burns for the children because uh, here in uh, London broader method or LNB method according to the child's age in proportion we will take to the relative body part size so different uh, above 10 years of age group we will be calculating according to their age group their weight so that is London broader method in LNB method so here see here previously we learnt in adults it is around 9% per one hand per when you look in the LNB method, so they have been categorized into A, B, C. So A, B, C, and they will be giving scores in this way. This is LNB method. Okay. And when we want to calculate the larger area, larger area, so accurate method is nothing but that is LNB method is the best method when we want to see in a accurate estimation for large burn areas. Clear. This is also one MCQ. <clears throat> Any confusion in this? 
I think I am clear. Our explanation is clear. So what we are learning here today, we are going to learn about burns topic. So the types of burns, how it is first, and how we are going to measure the total surface area using the burns formula. And so far, we have discussed the three topics. Then characteristics of burns. So if you look at the characteristics of burns, we have superficial. So what is the general meaning of superficial? and deep partial and full thickness superficial means whatever surface area you can touch and feel that is called as superficial clear and it is nothing but superficial is similar to first degree burns and deep partial thickness and so in the deep partial thickness we also include uh, we also include this epidermis dermis level that is called as deep partial thickness understood and full thickness is here we will have this epidermis, dermis, then the muscle tissue, subcutaneous, all this comes under this third degree. So superficial, deep partial and full thickness. Then coming to the super, uh, superficial or partial thickness burns. So in the superficial one, uh, I have uh, um, seen in this uh, PR other textbook. They have asked about all these layers of this epidermis, like uh, what is stratum corneum, striatum lucidum, stratum uh, granulosum, spinosum, germinatum, like that they have asked. And they have given a uh, few definitions for all these terminologies and they have asked them to match with this uh, terminologies. So when you are going for a exam preparation, no, just to go through the few important points from this um, uh, important uh, points or bullet points from this integumentary system clear so stratum corneum is the uppermost layer and next to the stratum corneum we have the lucidum next is granulosum spinosum and germinatum so along with the the stratum germinatum is the bottom layer in the epidermis. so whatever the so if you look at this image i think this image is clear for you now we we'll look at this image the first degree burns so this is called the first degree burns in the radiation burns or only epidermis is involved that comes under this superficial or first degree burns and this degrees of burns where we can use to ex to assess the extent depth how much length low to undi and we will use this degree of burn so here this first degree burns how it be caused with sunburn hot liquid hot liquid splash and it is very painful because we have the pain receptors on this layer so this layer is painful and it will heal without grafting no need of skin grafting is not needed in this first degree burn then coming to the second degree burn so can you look at this beautiful picture here so in that beautiful picture we have marked regarding the heat light touch pain cold so these are the hair follicles pair follicles which is visible on the hand that is called as a shaft here so this is epidermis so epidermis below the epidermis we have this dermis so in the dermis we have this nerve endings can you see the nerve endings here so in the nerve endings in the we can feel all these receptors are there in this one dermis <coughs> excuse me So in the derm is, so in the second degree burn, if you look at the second degree burn, here it involves epidermis and dermis and it is mainly caused due to flame burn. And if you look at this uh, second degree burn, they may ask questions, in which degree of burn you will find blister. Blister is nothing but water filled sac, that is called as blister, clear? And it will, the most painful degree of burn is also this uh, second degree burn so you will find the fluid filled vesicles here and once this fluid filled vesicle ruptures you will find wet water ruptures it will heal without grafting so once this superficial layer ruptures it will heal automatically no need of grafting in this second stage burn then full thickness third degree fourth degree if you look at now so i think this picture is clear So if you look at the third degree and fourth degree here, so around, along with epidermis, dermis 
and the bottommost tissue subcutaneous layers are also involved in the third and fourth degree burn so in the fourth degree burn even the bone will be exposed here and all the nerve endings so just now we have seen the nerve endings na in the dermis all will be damaged and it will also involve muscle or bone so the main example of this full uh, thickness burns is chemicals it may be caused due to chemicals or due to scalding burns or due to electric current and when you look at the wound it appears like dry white leathery and uh, gradually it will become hard and if uh, once you look at the later stages of this burn it will look it will appear black in nature and it will not heal automatically definitely you have to do grafting understood and there are certain terminologies with this uh, grafting like allograft homograft heterograft xenograft uh, just to go through this terminologies once this session gets over don't forget ha huh? so coming to the fluid replacement in burns patient so once we are receiving this uh, burns patient in the ward where in which in the ward where i am working na i am working in plastic surgery and reconstructive ward and surgical oncology ward usually we receive this uh, burns patient as soon as we receive we do nursing assessment and we also attach this uh, uh, this rule of 9 pictured one sheet we will put so that whatever the patient had the burns they with the our duty doctors Uh, the physicians or the SRJ or whoever is on duty, they will mark in that a complete draw paper. They will mark the extent of burns on the diagram of that particular burn patient. So here, fluid replacement therapy, we have formulas like a consensus formula, Evans formula, Brooke Army formula, and Parkland Baxter formula. so the most widely used around the world is parkland formula so this is the formula where we are which we are going to learn so as we will be learning this formula i want all you people to have a pen and paper i will be asking questions regarding this so that you can calculate and tell it to me i will explain how to calculate clear so parkland formula or baxter formula is the formula to assess the extent of burns so if you look at the parkland or baxter formula it is lactated ringer solution rl the fluid rl 4 ml of rl into uh, 4 ml of rl into kg body weight into total burn surface area is the formula to calculate previously it was uh, 2 ml but now it is 4 ml so 4 ml of rl into the person's body weight into the total burn surface area clear so if i say Uh, according to our question what the question is two legs two legs means around two legs it is around uh, 18 18 36% of burns is there so if i am talking about one hand so what will be the percentage it will be around 9% if i am saying head and neck head and neck means 9% so that is the percentage so there we will mark this percentage here we will mark here patient weight clear so whatever value we are getting after this calculation in that first half we will be giving in 8 hours and the next half we have to give it in the 16 hours so after that in day 2 we are going to give the collide is added in the second day so if you look at the parkland formula so this is 4 ml of rl into total burn surface area weight and first half we will be giving in the 8 hours and whatever the value amount of fluid we will be getting here na that we will be giving in the next 16 hours clear then the following example here uh, we have one patient for example here we have one patient who is around whose weight is 60, 70 kg in kg i have told you so 70 kg uh, so 4 ml into 70 kg and the patient has tbsa tbsa is nothing but total burned surface area so here the patient has 50 percentage of burn surface area so how we are going to calculate 4 into 70 into 50 so once you calculate this you are going to get a value of 14000 clear so 14000 we are going to get so 14 ml we are going to transfer for transfuse within how many hours within 24 hours so in that first 8 hours we will give so what is the 14000 half 
7000 ml and the next 16 hours we are going to give the next 7000 ml so in the 8 hours if you want to give 7000 ml we have to give at the rate of 875 ml per hour if you are transfer, uh, transfusing 875 ml per hour so it will be around 7000 ml in 8 hours understood then in the next uh, 16 hours we have to give 7000 ml and 437.5 ml per hour we have to give or we can write it as 438 round figure otherwise so if we put 438 ml we will be getting around 7008 ml clear so this is how we are going to calculate understood so 7000 ml we are going to give for 8 hours so in one hour how much we have to give so that we don't know so we do a cross multiplication so we don't know the x value here so x is equal to 7000 by sorry 7000 by 8 if you put 7000 by 8 then you will get a value of around 875 ml per hour am i correct here understood the same way we are going to calculate when it is around for 16 hours same 7000 equal to if you are giving it for 16 hours so how much we are going to get for 1 hour so it is nothing but 7000 by 16 so you will get a value of 437 ml per hour chituko good evening <coughs> So understood the calculation ma? It's not that difficult as you feel. It's very 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 easy topic. Understood? So according to our question here, what is our question? It is bilateral lower limbs they have mentioned. So it is around 18. So one limb, the other limb. Two limbs, 18. And genitalia they have mentioned. That is around 1. And one palm surface area is how much? It is also 1%. So, so how much it will come? So, 8 plus 8, 8 to the 16, 17, 18. And so, the answer is 38 percentage TBSA is the patient birth area. Understood? So, we will calculate using this. So, 4 ml into, so imagine the patient weight is around 50 kg into 38. So, if you calculate, you will get a one value. That value we will divide it into first 8 hours and the next 16 hours. Clear? Clear, clear, clear. If you are, if the answer is clear, all of you, the answer is clear, please comment in the comment section. Put a thumbs up so that I can understand you people are listening or at least you are online in the class. Clear? Then very important points coming to this. Important points to remember in this uh, burns topic. So, burns are classified based on the depth and also the area not other things we are not going to classify according to the pain or temperature all those things will not be there so only depth and area we are going to see so in exams they may confuse what is the formula london broader formula or rule of nine formula they may confuse the only formula we are calculating here is parkland or parkland or baxter formula and other formulas also i have discussed here na? that is Okay, Sadia. So, the other formulas like consensus formula, Evans formula, Brook Army formula. So, these are the formulas. So, don't get confused. In exams, the only thing they try to do is confuse in such a way you feel all the four options are correct. So, prioritize your answer and you can do. Clear. Then, in third and fourth degree burn, it is painless. So, the question may come which, which degree of burn is painless. So, that is third and fourth degree. Because the nerve endings are destroyed and nociceptors, the pain receptor cells are destroyed in third and fourth degree. Then blisters are mainly seen. So the question will be like blisters are seen in which degree? That is in second degree burns. Then first degree burns is superficial burn in which the burn is limited to the outer layer of epidermis. So the question will be like which degree burn is superficial? So that is nothing but first degree. So in second degree burn, the affected parts of skin are like half of the epidermis and 7 by 8 part of the dermis. In second degree burn, it will be like half of the epidermis and 7 by 8 part of the dermis. Clear all of you? 
okay next we will learn about this uh, hepatitis so how this hepatitis occurs what is this hepatitis all these things we will see if you look at this hepatitis it is nothing but the acute or chronic inflammation of the liver so it is mainly caused due to bacteria viruses trauma and sometimes the immune disorders and the toxins so the function of the liver is to eliminate all the toxins whichever is getting accumulated in the body and if you look at the hepatitis there are around 1 2 3 4 5 types of uh, hepatitis is there in that hepatitis b constitute the major 50% of the hepatitis is hepatitis b clear and hepatitis a is caused by the rna virus of the genus enterovirus ruksana thank you okay <clears throat> then coming to this uh, hepatitis how this hepatitis treatment can will be given so supplementation of vitamin b c and k is the treatment and high calorie high protein diet should be given so because of this uh, when there is a damage to the liver so the protein protein absorption and digestion will not happen properly so the patient should be given more of a calorie and more of a protein related diet and moderate fat diet if patient has hepatitis b c and d e, we will start with arv that is anti retroviral therapy will be used for chronic disease and we will see now hepatitis a virus is everything clear all of you listening don't forget to like the video and share the video and listen properly clear so hepatitis a is he hepatitis a is mainly caused by the fecal and oral route if you look at the diagram you will understand so this is the mouth this is hands and this is hand washing so it is mainly caused by the fecal oral route so it is mainly due to the fecal oral route and it is also through the contaminated food and water if you look at the characteristics of the disease it is very acute and short term and in exam if they are asking questions related to the incubation period it is around 15 to 45 days is the incubation period of hepatitis a virus clear then hepatitis b hepatitis b which i have told na around 50% yes hepatitis b virus so it is mainly Uh, how it is uh, transmission what is the mode of transmission is it, that is through uh, blood blood uh, semen vaginal discharge and all the body fluids like cerebral uh, csf fluid aseptic fluid synovial fluid pleural blood vessel so it is the mode of transmission is through body fluids blood vaginal secretions or semen so this is the way of spread of hepatitis b clear and coming to the hepatitis uh, b vaccination so hepatitis b vaccination will be like zero dose one dose and six months dose that is second dose so first dose if i am taking today what is the date now uh, today is uh, 28th march so 28th april so 28th march then 28th april i will receive and from 28th march to if i add 6 months the second dose i will receive that is hepatitis b vaccination especially we healthcare workers whoever is working on the bedside na they should receive this hepatitis b vaccination zero dose first dose and second dose at the 6 month 6 month dose is from the initial dose we have to calculate the 6 month dose and you have to receive the vaccination clear Thank you. Very good class, Ruxana. Oh, those are so, those so 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 sweet of you. Then next is hepatitis C. So the how this hepatitis C vaccine, uh, sorry vaccine, uh, hepatitis C is how it spreads. So it is mainly spread by. So it is mainly spread through receiving contaminated blood products. So I want to tell a small incident where one female uh, who is living in a village, what she does. Uh, whenever she is getting sick, and usually no, no people they whenever they are sick they want to go to their local doctor and they will say the local RMP doctor and they will say please give uh, what a soothing one day, what a saline one day, one day like that. They have the habit of getting injections from the local RMP doctor, and we exactly don't know whether they will be following this uh, 
biomedical waste hazardous uh, segregation or how to treat the injections they don't know what they will do they will reuse the syringes though they will discard the needle intramuscular iv needle they will discard but they will use the same syringe and plunger they will put it under hot water and again they will use the same syringe and uh, plunger to give injections to the other patient so like this our healthcare professionals they themselves will be giving the patient this kind of disease that is through contaminated syringes and needles contaminated unsafe injections will definitely lead to this hepatitis c clear and through blood transfusion we can have and through sexual transmission hepatitis c is spread and getting tattooed so when you look at this uh, tattoo getting practices uh, what in our army or indian army indian navy what what is there that whatever tattoo if they want to get it should not be visible like inside the body areas they can have but like on the face neck on the arms visible areas there should not be any tattoos like that the tattoo people who are giving this tattoo they will not be using sterile needles every time for piercing tattoo tillu cheptaru kada pacha bottu anesi so that should be avoided through that way also the patient will get this hcv and uh, dialysis through dialysis uh, especially this uh, uh, renal failure patients will be there na so what they will do they will go to the hospitals in few hospitals they will not do this proper sterilization and all and because of that the patient may also get this hcv positive because of this dialysis machine so we must be very very careful in this so this hcv is around incubation period is around 15 to 160 days the next one is hepatitis d virus so hepatitis d virus is also like hepatitis b infection and its incubation period is around 28 to 120 180 days then hepatitis e hepatitis e is mainly due to contaminated water contaminated food water everything whatever they have so hepatitis e is spread through that way and look at the incubation period it is around 14 to 160 days is the incubation period of hev H hepatitis E virus. Are the pictures clear? Are you able to understand? Those who are online, please answer now so that I can understand whether you people are learning or not. So all of you guess the topic here. What is the guess topic? So I have posted one pic. I uh, have kept one picture here. So tell me what is this about? Answer in the comment section so that I will come to know. what are we discussing here once you comment i will start because there will be a little bit of lag oh we know the exactly correct angina we know that has answered correctly we know it's angina so here we are talking about this uh, angina chest pain angina pectoris okay myocardial infarction that is also included in our topic today then the nurse is teaching an adult who has so here our nurse is teaching an adult regarding the angina regarding angina and talking about ntg nitroglycerin the nurse tells him he will know the nitroglycerin is effective when he experience tingling under the tongue or when his pulse rate increases or when his pain subsides or when his activity tolerance increases so the patient here nurse is taking care of a patient who has received nitroglycerin and how she will tell to the patient whether the drug is effective or not so let us learn about this uh, nitroglycerin here angina here so when you look at this okay. so angina is nothing but transient chest pain caused by insufficient so what is the meaning of a transient here short period so short period chest pain occurring for a short period causing insufficient blood flow to the myocardium myocardium is nothing but the heart muscles resulting in myocardial ischemia so ischemia means reduced or restricted 
restricted blood flow to the cardiac muscles so what will be the causes and precipitating events of this angina so here we have around four e's so what are the four e's the precipitating events are exertion exertion is doing vigorous exercise that too sporadically sporadically means at irregular intervals so when the patient is doing this vigorous exercise like uh, our celebrities do you know so like that they want to be fit fit and fab so vigorous exercises when they are doing that is called as exertion not regularly but irregular intervals then emotions that is excitement and involving themselves in sexual activity and eating eating after heavy meal after heavy fat diet so then environmental factors like a very cold environment or hot environment what it will do cold and hot environment vasoconstriction so it will cause a uh, vasoconstriction and vaso dilation means blood vessels so these are the factors which will cause this angina clear then the interventions for this chest pain is so according to the signs and symptoms what the patient will have we will give according to that if the patient has sob unable to breathe we will give for oxygen and when the patient has this chest pain nitroglycerin what it will have immediately the patient will uh, tell once then he receives nitroglycerin sublingual sublingual means under the tongue so under the tongue why we have to keep it under the tongue because under the tongue it will cause rapid absorption and more capillaries minute blood capillaries are present under the tongue so because of this it will have a rapid absorption and the patient will verbalize decreased level of pain so here the sublingual every 5 minutes for three times we have to give and that particular medication should be stored in a cool place in a glass or in a metal container then we can give this nitroglycerin in the form of paste or in the form of patch patch is like, like a transdermal patch which we will paste on the patient's skin so i have done a small short video on bular patch just go and watch if possible how this uh, transdermal patch uh, really works then we have to monitor the vital signs of the patient and ecg monitoring we have to do because the patient is complaining of chest pain and the patient should be in semi sitting position semi sitting position like that the patient should be in a semi sitting position and with the upright semi sitting upright position the patient should be clear and emotional support should be given and teach and advise the patient for a low so sodium and decreased fat and no smoking so all these interventions should be thought for the patient and other other and other medications should also be given to the patient when you look at this uh, calcium blocking agents which so what is this calcium blocking agents will do it will decrease it will decrease the blood pressure and uh, what are the calcium blocking agents here nifedipin verapamil or isoptin and kelan and it is also used to treat angina and supraventricular arrhythmias so what is this uh, supra supraventricular arrhythmias so in we heart we have this so the upper two chambers are called atrium and the lower two cha cha chambers are called ventricles here we are tra talking about supraventricular arrhythmia so when there is a upper chamber of the heart these two upper chamber atrium of the heart arrhythmia is there at that time we will have chest pain and decreased myocardial need for oxygen so when the patient is having decreased blood supply at that time and other medications also we will give like beta adrenergic blockers so what does this uh, beta adrenergic blockers will do it will decrease the blood pressure and it will cause the heart and it will cause the heart to beat more slowly more slowly with less force so that is the work of this beta adrenergic adrenergic block that is nadolol propanolol and indoral so calcium blocking agents and beta adrenergic blockers will be given to the patient when the patient has chest pain and here so what is our question so here once the patient is taking nitroglycerin what the patient will tell 
patient will have the patient will tell he is having when his pain subsides it indicates that medication is working absolutely fine understood rest of the things here like uh, he experiencing tingling under the tongue it's a normal thing his uh, pulse rate increases actually pulse rate should not increase the pulse rate should decrease clear and his activity tolerance it is nothing to do with this here understood so this will be our option here the next question a client is presented with embolic stroke so which of the following conditions uh, places the client at risk of thromboembolic stroke so what is this thromboembolic stroke really means here so here the patient has come by, come with embolic stroke so what are the conditions which will put the patient at risk here so that is atrial fibrillation bradycardia superficial vein thrombosis or history of myocardial infarction so here i will show you one uh, video so that you will understand uh, what uh, what is our question next so can you see the blood supply so the blood supply is going so in the brain can you see the gradual development of this process ah sorry So the, can you see the development of this clots? So the atherosclerosis is here. So because of this, gradually the brain will have a decreased blood supply, and there is a portion of this ischemia here. Can you see? So because of this clot here. So gradually that portion is, that portion of brain is getting decreased oxygen, decreased blood supply. So it will cause a, this is nothing but a short period of transient ischemic attack. Understood? So here we are discussing about cerebrovascular accident or stroke. We are discussing about cerebrovascular accident or stroke. So CEVI is nothing but it is a sudden loss of brain function resulting due to the disruption of blood supply to part of the brain just now have seen the video no so that you will understand which will cause temporary or permanent dysfunction so because of this what will happen it is why this occurs that is due to the thrombosis thrombosis or embolism or due to hemorrhage so what are this uh, thrombosis or emboli or hemorrhage see <coughs> see the clot might have been happened on other part of the body it will be like on other part of the body on the legs and that particular clot superficial veins clot is traveling to, through the heart to the brain when it is reaching the brain because of that that other portion of the brain the brain will not get oxygen or blood supply so the traveling blood clot is called as emboli thrombosis is the blood clot which is present at other organ it is traveled to other area that is called as embolism understood then the, what are the factors of the cerebrovascular accident? So the people who are above 65 years of age, above 65 years of age are more prone to it and hereditary and those who have the habit of smoking and alcohol consumption. Alcohol consumption more than 5 glasses, more than 5 glasses of alcohol per day and sometimes having a junk food, unhealthy food, more fat food, more deep fried food or a, whatever the food bag outside they are consuming and high cholesterol levels so what are the high cholesterol levels here here we are talking about uh, total cholesterol level ldl and triglycerides so hdl are considered as the good cholesterol so when this total cholesterol level ldl and triglycerides levels are elevated or vldl are elevated we consider that is a very bad cholesterol so because of this increased level of cholesterol the there may be a chances of this atherosclerosis formation
Atherosclerosis formation will be there and due to over stress and the patient has other comorbidities like diabetes and increased body weight, more obesity at that time it will be there. So this thromboembolic stroke, it is like I just now have told no, it will in the leg, in the superficial veins, later it will go through the heart and it will reach the brain. So because of this what will happen? Because of that later the patient will having end up having stroke. So the types of uh, this stroke when you look into, this is cerebral hemorrhage. So in the brain you can see this bleeding. So due to hypertension and this hypertension is mainly we can see in male gender more and this embolus, embolus which is completely blocking the blood supply to the part of the brain. Here the blood we can see but here blood is not there and here we can see the thrombus means gradually there is a injury and there it is blocking the blood vessel. Understood? So how we can assess this uh, cerebrovascular accident the patient will have complaints of chest pain and head, uh, headache, vomiting and seizures and the patient will have a decreased level of consciousness. Knuckles rigidity is nothing but stiff neck, fever and a hypertension and slow bounding pulse, uh, pulse and chain stroke respiration. One of my um, relatives has recently passed with this uh, CVA. He had this uh, pontine hemorrhage. It was new to me pontine hemorrhage where the bleeding has uh, happened at the stem of the spinal cord the stem of the spinal cord we had near the pons region so later he was on ventilator and he passed away within one week it's a very bad thing so these are the things related to this and so once the patient has this uh, CVA they will have this hemiparesis hemiparesis means right side brain damage causing left side paralysis that is contralateral paralysis and the patient will have aphasia where the patient will not be able to understand the speech or express the speech then hemianopsia unable to see on one side of the or one side unable to see one side right side or left side the visual field of both openness if you look at this is the eyes here so the patient will not be able to see one side of the eyes means the visual field will be completely blocked understood the patient will not be able to see either on the side then how this can be revealed CT and brain scan and cerebral arteriography will help us to understand the malformation of the vessels is it clear all of you then coming to this uh, stroke the paralysis we have to know the terminologies here monoplegia monoplegia means one hand, one hand, right leg, left leg, right hand, left hand, right leg, left leg, right hand, left hand, like that. Any one organ is involved, that is called as monoplegia. Hemiplegia means, that is here, the sagittal section, sagittal one. So, either of the body part, either right side or left side. Diplegia means, this is also called as uh, uh, paraplegia. We call it the lower segment of the body. Quadriplegia is complete all the when all the four limbs are involved upper two limbs and lower limbs are involved then we call it as the quadriplegia and here we also uh, discussed regarding this uh, hemiplegia hemiplegia that is right side brain damage causing the left side paralysis hemiplegia So hemiplegia is here the patient has right side paralysis due to left side of brain damage. Here the patient has right side brain damage and left side paralysis. This is nothing but this is contra contralateral paralysis hemiplegia. Understood? So the interventions when coming to this uh, traveling clot. So the most important point here is thrombolytic agents like TPA that is tissue plasminogen activator so the question has come regarding this so when should be given this uh, TPA when the patient has stroke it should be given within two to three hours so they will ask the duration they may ask in the meaning of hours or minutes so two hours means how we will say within 120 minutes like that we have to answer 
so tissue plasminogen activator has to be given within 3 hours of stroke then only it will be useful otherwise later it should be given with heparin otherwise irreversible brain, brain, brain damage will occur so the answer for our question is a client is presented with embolic stroke so which of the condition will place the patient in such condition is superficial vein thrombosis clear that when helping a patient helping a stroke patient the nurse should assist on which side so here the patient has a right side paralysis right so the patient weak side will be on the right side so this is the stronger one where the patient is able to move this left hand and left leg so while assessing this stroke patient <coughs> on which side you are going to help the patient whether in the weak side on the strong side or from the behind back of the patient like that so which side you are going to help the patient see on the weak side we, uh, why we have to help on the weak side because the patient will be able to move his extremities on the uh, patient which has strength strong side he will be able to move his extremities both upper limbs and lower limbs but on the paralysis side we will not be able to move so when the nurse is assisting the patient we are going to assist the patient on the weaker side and whenever we are feeding this uh, patient because the patient has paralysis on one side so whenever we are uh, feeding the patient we have to put the food on the back of the mouth we have to put the food on the back of the mouth on the stronger side means if the patient should be fed on the stronger side not on the paralyzed side here he, the patient is paralyzed right so here the patient the imagine this as the face so this is strong side and this is weak side and when you are placing any food inside the mouth on the stronger side you have to keep understood otherwise if you are feeling uh, feeding on the weaker side the food will be affected and it will be trapped in the cheek and we have to help them in passive range of motion exercises passive means what so one person will be assisting the patient to teach the exercises like physiotherapy and all. active means active range of motion is the patient themselves when they themselves will be doing that exercise that is called as active range of motion exercises and turn the patient every second hour lip to prevent this uh, pressure ulcers on the right side and 20 minutes and uh, on the unaffected side we have to keep them turning and avoid hot packs and don't apply hot packs on the paralyzed side then we will see about myocardial infection so what is this myocardial infection so here the myocardial infection is nothing but death of myocardial cells from inadequate oxygenation so if you look at the causes atherosclerosis and coronary artery we have seen one video no just now that one and decreased blood flow due to shock or hemorrhage when the heart is receiving decreased blood flow due to any hemorrhage bleeding on the rest of the body parts so that time that is called as shock or hemorrhage at that time and so what will be the signs and symptoms of this uh, myocardial infection the patient will have a cool clammy means like uh, what to say is about to sweat like that cool clammy body the patient will have low grade fever and the blood pressure will be elevated first then later it will decrease and there will be st segment changes in the patient and elevated erythrocyte sedimentation rate elevated cholesterol level and serum enzyme changes will also be there if we look at the interventions so whatever the signs and symptoms the patient will have according to that we are going to plan the interventions for the patient understood so IV line medications we have to give for pain we have to give morphine and oxygen via nasal cannula or mask and for arrhythmias ST segment changes will be there now for that we need to monitor the ECG and drugs to treat arrhythmias and put the patient in a semi follows position clear semi follows position we are going to put the patient and we have to monitor the intake and output chart and thrombolytic drugs that's not how to discussed about the TPA na? within uh, two, uh, 2 to 3 hours we are going to give this TPA agent to the patient
Understood regarding this myocardial infection? So, next question. So, blood supply to heart interrupted more than 6 minutes. It may cause reversible MI, means reversible myocardial infection or cardiac arrest. Irreversible MI or it will cause cardiac block. So, if the heart is receiving, if the blood supply to heart is interrupted for more than 6 minutes. So, what will happen to the heart? If the blood supply is reduced, so what will happen? The coronary arteries which are supplying to the blood to the heart, what will happen to the heart? It will cause reversible myocardial infarction or cardiac arrest or irreversible MI or it will cause cardiac block. So, the answer will be irreversible myocardial infarction. The we cannot bring back the client. So, it will cost more than 6 minutes means it will cause irreversible myocardial infarction. Okay. Okay. Which one of the following is a non-modifiable risk factor of atherosclerosis? Atherosclerosis is nothing but build up of this plaque formation in the blood vessels which gradually blocks the blood vessels. Then later we will go for stent placement. All these things will be there. Na? So, which of the risk factors we can modify here? Cigarette smoking is a habit which can be modified. And hyperlipidemia. So, just now we have discussed about, discussed about triglycerides, HDL, LDL, VLDL, triglycerides, cholesterol. So, this can be modified through exercise, through diet change. So, this is a modifiable risk factor. Then, sedentary lifestyle. This can also be changed. Sedentary lifestyle, we once we will become start doing activities of uh, daily living, this can be changed. So, the answer will be female over 55 years of age. Age cannot be changed. Rest of the things like cigarette smoking, hyperlipidemia, sedentary lifestyle, this can be changed. Here we are asking non-modifiable risk factor. So, age cannot be modified. Understood? <coughs> So, the answer will be female over which is a non-modifiable risk factor. Clear? Oh, we know you are correct. Rashupal, good evening. Then, few more slides, we are finishing the session now. Clear? So, the question is, which cardiac enzyme would the nurse expect to elevate in a client diagnosed with myocardial infection when there is an injury to the heart which enzyme will be which enzyme will be elevated usually if you look at this uh, ckmb creatinine kinase these enzymes will be present in the they will be present in the heart but when there is an injury infarction surgery these levels will be elevated that is creatinine phospho phosphokinase then uh, what are the rest of the options here? Either it is lactose dehydrogenous, troponin or WBC. WBC we are usually we will find elevated in appendicitis. Right? So which cardiac enzyme? So if you look at the... <coughs> so if you look at this uh, creatinine kinase here, it will be present in the myocardial muscles, but it will be increased when there is any necrosis or infection. So, here CKM, when the same creatinine kinase is present in skeletal muscle, we call it as CKMM. Clear? When it is present in the cardiac muscles, we call it as creatinine kinase CKMB. When it is present in the brain, we call it as CKBB. So, these are the cardiac markers. Understood? So, these are the cardiac markers we will find. Whenever there is an injury to that particular tissue, when there is injury, that CK, uh, CKMM will be elevated in the skeletal muscle. And injury to the cardiac muscle, this CKMB will be elevated. CKMB and CKBB, when there is injury in the brain tissue, this CKBB enzyme will be elevated. Understood? So, the question... So, the correct answer for this question is a troponin. So, previously it was CKMB was the right answer, but TROP I and TROP T are also two cardiac markers. 
but the best cardiac marker is trop i understood so trop i is the best cardiac marker to guess the myocardial infarction so here just now i have told you that is mb means in myocardial muscle if it is bb it means the creatinine kinase enzyme is present in the brain and mm means it is present in the skeletal muscle and this is a distractor here there is no such word called mk so a patient is suspected to have a myocardial infection and the nurse assesses the elevation of which of the following so which will be elevated which will when heart there is a myocardial infection which enzyme will be elevated they have given few enzyme names that is mb bb mm so what will be our answer it is nothing but myocardium is mb okay so the answer will be mb then the last question of this session when caring for a client with hemorrhagic shock hemorrhagic shock so how should the nurse position the client hemorrhagic shock is nothing but bleeding so because of bleeding the blood is lost so after hemorrhage what will happen so how we are going to position the patient flat in the bed whether the patient will be in a flat in the bed with legs elevated or the legs will be elevated like this patient will be flat legs will be elevated uh, then trendlenburg position trendlenburg position is complete elevation like this then semi sitting position whether the patient will be in semi sitting position so which will be the best option when the client has this uh, hemorrhagic shock bleeding shock which one will be advised any answers from your side okay we know i've been answering so good so well so answer this question See the patient is already suffering with blood loss, hemorrhage, blood loss, hypotension will be there, and again the patient is into shock. So what position we will advise for the patient? Here we should not advise Trendelenburg position. Should not be advised. Understood? If you advise this Trendelenburg position, because of this abdominal pressure, it is going to give pressure on the diaphragm. So because of this diaphragm, again the patient will have breathing issues. so the position which we should give is the leg should be elevated the body should be flat the leg should be elevated in hemorrhagic shock understood and the semi sitting position semi sitting position should be avoided because the client will have increased venous return um, uh, it will make the client situation more worse so the option is correct option is flat in bed with legs elevated is the correct answer and so so this is the correct position when the patient has this uh, hemorrhagic shock clear so with this we finish uh, finish our session and uh, so far whoever have not subscribed our channel please like the video subscribe the video and share in your nursing groups which will be useful for all the people and i wind up the session any more doubts please ask in the comment section all of you is the class boring or interesting all of you listening how was the class today everybody listening everybody is able to understand till we'll wind up the session thank you thank you all of you being so patient and listening to the class